Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I am going to be working on drawing Age of Night, chapter, well, I always do this backwards, chapter 23, page 4. I already have my panels all laid out here, and I put in my perspective grids already, because those are kind of a pain to try to do on camera. And right out of frame, I have my script, and I have my thumbnails that are going to inform me what I'm putting in all of these little boxes. I also have, just out of frame, a, a completed page, a previous completed page. Ooh, I'll just show you the bottom bit of it so you don't get any spoilers. Um, because I'm going to be continuing something that's happening in that scene, so I need a reference for what that area looks like so that it's consistent. So there's a lot of, this chapter has a lot of just like buildings and stuff, which is a little bit of a challenge to draw and keep interesting over and over and over again. Starting with a building. I'm using my perspective grid to keep everything looking more or less correct. There's like a little tower coming off of this one. Well, it's going to need to extend a little further back. It kind of goes. I think it just kind of stops right at the edge of this building, this walkway does. So there, so I just kind of cheated that a little bit, but there is actually a technical way to find out if your if the door that you want centered or anything that you want centered on an object in perspective is actually centered. So you have your your surface in perspective this plane of this building. And then what you do is you draw an X connecting the corners and where the X crosses is your center. It's not going to be in like, if you measured this, it would automatically be the center of that line because since it's in, in perspective, it's getting more compressed as it moves away from you. So this side should be smaller than this side, which it kind of sort of is. But, so that means I eyeballed it pretty close that should come over just a tiny bit. And the same thing will be true of the door in that the larger half, so to speak, will be closer to you, closer to the picture plane. I apologize for all the noise in the background. I'm running laundry <laughs> and I thought it would be done, <laughs> but it's not done. <laughs> I thought it would be done by the time I started streaming, but it's not done. So if you hear any weird like mechanical thumping and gurgling noises. That's my laundry draining and spinning out behind us. Sorry about that. Always an adventure. All right, so we've got this little building. There's no window on that side, but we've got a little, little boat hanging out here. And a little boat moored right here. I'm just going to do a kind of vague boat shape for the moment. Another little boat moored here. And there's another building back here. Which I have some of the windows, let's see, from back here. That's, what are we doing? There we go, that's better. All right, and over here we have shrubberies. Which in this initial stage where I'm just kind of knocking in the basic shapes, trying to figure out where stuff is gonna fit are just gonna be kind of placeholder domes and cones for the different types of 
trees, one little scraggly trunk, that sort of thing. But not getting too much detail in there quite yet. All right, that's the basics for that panel, very basically roughed in. So in the next panel, we're still gonna want the corner of that building. with like just enough detail to let you know that it is the same building. So there's gonna be the edge of that little boat that's right there so that you know that, oh yeah, we're still looking at the same building. Maybe even the end of that other little boat over here. And then we've got shrub, tree, tree. Oh, shrubs. Oh, trees. Scraggly shrubs and trees all over. And hiding over here, we're going to have a couple of figures in this area. Kind of crouching down. in this scraggly vegetation. Cool, okay. So again, that's just a very a very rough kind of layout of where there will be bushes and trees and things. So looking at my layout and my script off out of frame here, we've got some word balloons coming up so I need to see how much space I need to give them because I always put my word balloons in first to make sure that I have room for them. Because definitely don't want to end up running short on room to put in more balloons. That is bad. Two figures here, one of them is either much shorter than the other or crouched down much farther than the other. So. They are hiding behind this vegetation, so we still want that here. Kind of frames them in nicely too. Scraggly, scraggly swamp tree there. More scraggly swamp trees. All right, another word balloon. Let's see if I have what kind of room I need to leave. Not a lot. It's a pretty small one small couple of them over there.
little lines to just indicate where there's going to be shrubs behind them. All right, let's scoot down so you can see what's going on down in this frame. All right, so once again, I need my grid. How are we doing this? Okay, because we're going to have... corner of this building over here that we saw earlier. And the corner of the walkway. And so then we've got a big domish shrub and then tree, tree. So we're going to have a figure kind of creeping through here. And back here we've got a tree. I'm trying to keep this at least somewhat consistent with the previous panel, even though it's like, yes, I know it's just a bunch of vegetation, but I'd like to have it at least somewhat consistently in the land here. So see the other figure creeping off this way. Everybody's creeping, creeping, creeping. That's what's going on in this chapter. Lots of creeping, followed by lots of action. I'm actually really excited. This is a very action-y chapter, which is difficult to draw and can be kind of exhausting and was very difficult to write, but it was a lot of fun. So I'm going to sharpen my pencil, and then we're going to start getting this all actually nailed down and drawn because uh, I've already got it all in and we're only like 12 minutes in. That's pretty good time. It helps that it's only a five panel page. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that helps immensely. All right, so going back up to the top and I see people. some people are lurking. Say, feel free to say hi and leave a comment. Um, if you have any questions, I like answering questions too. I may not answer it right away because my monitor's a little bit off to the side, but I do look up periodically and check to see if anyone is chatting. I try to answer questions if I can. All right, I'm going to start solidifying some of these details here. Facing some of those guidelines. architectural details in here. Oh, people are talking to me. I'm streaming in the shop. Despite the spoilers, there's no spoilers yet. yet. It's just some buildings and some blobs. This chapter is going to be really hard to not give, to keep working on and not be giving spoilers though before too long. I'm only a couple pages into it, so it's not bad yet, but it will be. <laughs> Like when I was trying to finish volume three and I was so far ahead of what was posted online and I kept doing these streams and I was like, uh, so I guess I can't show anybody these next like six pages because it's all spoilery stuff. Can be a challenge. All right. One side of the building. The 
this little boat over here. And then there's also just some assorted boat junk off to the side here. So we've got a random pole and some piles of rope, you know, like you do. Anywhere where you have boats, you end up with these piles of boat related junk. That is, that line is so not straight. It looks even more not straight on camera. When I look over at it, I'm like, wow, that's a really not straight line. Let's fix the side of this building. That's way better. Good grief. That was like not even close. Tower coming out of the top of the building. All right. And now I'm looking at this, and there's also another boat in this scene that's like here ishly. Like, if this frame were to continue, it would be like right over here. So, you're not going to see much of that, but I am going to put the mast in here because it does have a tall mast. This is like a catamaran type boat. Um, it has a tall mast, but also that mast is going to help break up this big open space over here. So not only is it more accurate, also helps this panel. Because here's a secret, it's accurate, but it makes the panel more of a disaster visually, then we're gonna go with inaccurate over visual disaster panel. Nastiness. Sail just kind of hanging slack there. Some rigging just kind of just kind of flopping there. All right. Just the edge of the walkway. And now I've got a couple little boats. Let's see. This one actually is like a rowboat. It has like a flat back over here. Or what? Uh, bow? Sterns? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not up on my boat terms. I'm not going to lie. And I've even spent a fair amount of time in boats and on the water mostly like canoes and kayaks and that sort of thing, but I'm not very good with my terms. Let me give it a second a little bench here. Rope where it's moored. Edge of the swamp. Let's see. This one next to it does not have a flat back. Oh, the laundry finally stopped. Thank goodness. That was so loud. I don't know how much of it picked up on the mic, but it was super loud in here. My studio also houses the laundry facilities for my family, so, you know, which is fine. It really only takes up, like, a small corner of the building, so it's not, it's not that big a deal, but then, you know, 
trying to concentrate on drawing and then I've got the spin cycle over there going wah, 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 wah. just like eh. Another couple of benches inside this boat. But also moored right here on the edge of this open courtyard area next to the dock. Okay, there's more of the swampy water. Mmm. Delightful. And still, however, over here on my trees and shrubs and whatnot, I'm not going to kill myself going into a ton of detail. I'm going to give it that nice little tree shaped outline. The little, like, I guess these are like evergreen, so they'd be like the needle needly bow outlines but I'm not going to go too crazy getting every little detail in there because I'm going to do so much of that work in ink there's really no reason for me to do it more than once like there's no reason to like get the outline sure so that I know where my shape what my shape is going to be I have some a guide to go by um but I'm not going to deal with all the all of the texture and all of the shading and everything at this point because I'm going to do all of that in ink very shortly so there's no need to do all of that work multiple times basically. Sometimes if a lighting situation is like particularly complex I'll kind of map out where the shadows are ahead of time but I'm really not gonna most of the time I'm not going to really like plan out and fill in every little shadow ahead of time because it's just not it's just not worth the effort. I'm just gonna do it all again in ink. I'm confident enough in my inking that I don't need to do that ahead of time. I don't need to make that map ahead of time. I know I can do it in that stage. But it helps to have a solid outline of each shape to know which ones are in front of which where those are all going to end. Just kind of firm all of this up so that I'm not confusing myself later. All right, that's the first panel is already done. Sharpen my pencil again. Move on to the next one. of the walkway which that's not a very straight line but that's okay I'll, I will use a straight edge tool when I go to ink it I'll scoot the edge of that boat over just a little bit I think it's a little too far one that's leaning up against the building there because we also to keep ourselves grounded visually as to where we are in reference to the last panel we still have that pile of boat stuff that we can use as a reference point for where we are. So here's the pole and the coils of rope. Boat stuff.
All right. It's a very little corner of the building and the boats over there. And then we got to come back and do trees, more trees. And we gotta stay consistent with our last ones. We've got a couple little grassy bits here. We've got some grassy bits here. Little grassy bit front here. Little grassy bit kind of out here. I'll probably add more as I go along. Clean up some of these underdrawing guidelines as I go. This tree is in front of that tree. You win. More shrubs. Shrub, shrub, shrub. One more. More grassy bit there. Now yeah, I'm gonna have to work on those two little figures. Which, okay, I guess you could consider, if you haven't, if you're not caught up, if you're not caught up with what's online right now, so if you haven't seen the latest comic update, the last page of, pa of chapter, the last couple pages of chapter 22, um, then the presence of these two characters could be considered a spoiler. So if you need to run away, then this is your warning. This is your warning. I'm not going to do anything too spoil spoilery, but I guess they're presence here is something of a spoiler. And they're so itty bitty for reference. That's how itty bitty these guys are. There's my fingernail. There are boats in future stories. Such a spoiler. Uh. I was at a convention one time. Was it? Oh, jeez. I forget which one. It was one of, it was an anime convention. I can't remember which anime convention it was, though. But during the costume contest, um, the MC made a joke about, like, made a reference to Dune. And like made a joke about the worms and the spice and all of that stuff. And someone in the audience shouted, spoilers. And he's like, that book was written before you were born. You can't call spoilers on it. <laughs> it's like, no, you don't get to call spoilers on something that old. <laughs> you haven't read it yet. That's your problem. probably tell from this who this character is. You'll definitely see better in the next panel. This 
characters are both wearing cloaks like you do when you're sneaking around at night. In a fantasy story. Okay, now my little figures are plopped in there. I can finish with the vegetation. I have some cattails over here. I like cattails. It's uh, just about... It's just past the summer solstice in the story, so you'd have cattails blooming at this point. Yes, I have to keep track of these things, so. Although it's really easy to accidentally lose track and then I have to go back and like <laughs> figure it all out again, which is not a fun time. So I'm trying to do a better job of keeping track and not, not losing track of how long things have taken how long the story has been going on because it's been going on for like the in story time has has covered a couple of months at this point i forget exactly i've already i've looked at it i want to say it's been about like f five months or something that the story's gone on all right these little Piney trees are getting a little monotonous. I think I need to put in another sticky tree somewhere. A little sticky tree in here. I'm gonna make this tree, I'm gonna make this tree smaller. I'm gonna put in a little stick tree here. A little swampy stick tree. Pine can be a little bit smaller, so that stick tree has some room. I like that better. It breaks it up a little more. It's starting to look like a Christmas tree farm in there. Which it is not. It is a smoke. <laughs> if anyone spoils The Hobbit for me, I'll be upset. Bruh, that book was written in, like, 1932. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sorry if you're behind on what happens in The Hobbit. Uh, we're actually reading The Hobbit to the kids as their bedtime story right now. They're having a lot of fun with it. And it's been many years since I've reread The Hobbit. Um, it's a lot of fun. I want to say it's even more fun than I remember. I think it I think that's one book that um benefits greatly from being read aloud. I think a lot of the humor in it, you don't necessarily, doesn't necessarily come across as funny as it really is until someone's saying it out loud. And then you're like, oh my God, that's actually pretty hilarious. Hobbit is greater than the Lord of the Rings. Yes. Yes. It's it's just it's a it's a much more concise story. Like it's actually meant to be a a single story instead of this giant sprawling epic. And Tolkien wrote it before he had gotten like before he had really completely gone off the deep end of trying to tie everything together into this big multi-era spanning epic. Like the seeds of it are, are there, obviously. He had a world that he was building off of, but he wasn't completely lost in it yet.
Arr, come on, cooperate. Cooperate and do what you're supposed to there, objects I'm drawing. So you couldn't already tell from the facial structure, the hair definitely gives it away. It's Camaria. All right, Mario, and we got to get our other little shrub in here. Sharpen my pencil again because it's already getting dull again. Whoops, I'm going to scoot up so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. That would probably be helpful. Constance, her face is always a little bit of a challenge. Particularly her expression can be a challenge because one eye is always like half closed. 
because of the scars. And the corner of her mouth is turned up because of them, so. So she can be kind of a fun challenge to draw. Well, I'm gonna cover a good part of her face with this hood. Cause again, sneaking. That just turned into a blob. What are you doing here? Her cloak pin just kind of turned into this glob. All right, now that I've got the cloak to frame Merle in, back to her face. Chanel, this is, the view is a little bit from below, so we're kind of looking at the underside of her chin there, which is why you can also see the underside of her nose. We've got some more shrubberies to put in here. Shrubberies. Tree. And I'm really not going to go too crazy getting all the little details in on these because most of them are going to get covered by word balloons. But I don't know exactly how much yet, so I still want to at least have a decent guideline there for... whatever doesn't get covered by word balloons.
my cage tries to slide out of view here. So we've got some trees and shrubs. All right, so what time are we at? We're at 48 minutes. We've got about 10 or 11 minutes left at this point. So I probably won't quite finish the pencils for this page, but I'll be awful close. So I'm working down on this panel now. Ooh, that's my pencil sheds everywhere. Who's speaking? Constance is speaking. Yeah, this is the other reason I keep my script right on hand, because it's like, who is even talking in this panel? I don't know. Whose mouth is supposed to be open? <laughs> This is going to get obscured by the cloak, but I still need to know where her various body parts actually are. So that it makes sense when I draw the cloak over top of them. Where's her cloak pin. Shrub. The hood kind of it's big and loose enough that it's kind of actually draping over her shoulder a little bit there.
There's that part of her cloak. I'm trying to erase some of these guidelines as I go so that I'm not super duper confused when I go to ink this later. Accidentally ink something I don't want to or don't mean to because there's just too many little lines to look at. All right, here's Constance, we're at 5432. All right, so I'll probably finish this panel, but that'll be a, the last one. So while I am finishing this panel, it's time for me to do the things, where I tell you about the things. So as I mentioned earlier, this comic page that I'm working on is for my web comic, Age of Night, which you can find at ageofnight.com. I update every week, every Wednesday night. There's a new comic page. And those are always free to anyone. However, if you want to help support me financially while I am making these comics, you can also become a patron on Patreon, and when you're a patron, you get your comics a week early. You also get all sorts of other cool stuff, so you get to, like, see behind-the-scenes peaks of me working on some of this stuff. You get to see process at certain levels. Um, at higher level, like higher level monthly backers, get copies of like, mini comics and that sort of thing. And it's really cool, and I appreciate it. You can also follow me here on YouTube. You can subscribe if you like watching me and do these live streams, or sometimes I do other process videos too. You can look through my channel and see what other kind of videos that I've done. I have like time lapses sometimes or other like process videos that I'll upload on occasion. But I do try to do these streams about once a week. And if you're subscribed and you hit the little bell notification thingy, then your device or your computer, or whatever it is that you YouTube on will alert you when I'm going live, because unfortunately it's not as consistent a time of, like a day of the week as I would like, because life. But I, use, I usually do it about once a week. It's just not always the same day in that week. So like the video, subscribe to the channel if you like watching me draw and want to know when that's happening some more. You can find me on some of the other social medias as well. I'm on Twitter at Age of Night. I'm on Instagram at Amanda Call Art. All places that you can see me post artwork and interact and ask me questions and stuff. and be kept up to date on what I'm working on.
cards. And now I've got four panels, all nice and penciled, and one left that's roughed in but not finished yet, but pretty darn close. So I'm pretty close to being done with penciling this page. Thank you, everybody, for coming and hanging out, and I will see you guys all next time. Thank <laughs> you.